As a church leader, you have an added dimension to deal with when it comes to hearing God speak. Like everyone, you have to discern whether it's coming from your soul or your spirit, but then you have to weigh up whether it's God speaking to you or whether he wants to speak through you to the church. I've had a verse of scripture that's been simmering away on the back burner ever since the church moved up to the Rock Hub in Ed Walton some three years ago. I was sure it was from the Lord and I was sure it's for the church, but whenever I revisited it, it just didn't seem ready. It wasn't the right time to bring it to the fore. But then a couple of weeks ago, I sensed in my spirit that it was time to serve up a spiritual meal from God's word. The main ingredient was from a single verse of scripture in the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. In chapter 6, verse 16, God spoke the following words through his prophet. He said, stand at the crossroads, look and ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and you will find rest for your soul. One paraphrase of the Bible puts the people's response to God like this. We aren't going that way. It goes on to say that God even provided watchmen for them to warn them, to set off the alarm. But the people said, it's a false alarm. It doesn't concern us. These words echo through the ages to us today. En route to us, Proverbs 14, 12 declares that there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. Hundreds of years later, Jesus reminded us in his Sermon on the Mount that you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell, he said, is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only few ever find it. When we were lost, God rerouted us using the heaven's sat-nav system to get us back on his journey. But that didn't mean we had arrived, it just meant we were back on track. We still had many choices to make about what directions we would take ahead. The problem for many Christians like you and me is that we can so easily fall into the trap of thinking we've arrived or that we've learnt the way to go and don't need God to show us anymore. Like the Israelites in Jeremiah's day, we can hear the potential warning sounds in the Bible, but just pass them off as false alarms. If we needed to know the eternal ways of the Lord more than ever before, it's right now in this temporal, uncertain, fragile world we live in. If ever the world needed to realign themselves with the pathways, the ancient pathways of God, It's right now. And not only that, but in this season, as we look to draw in new people into our church family, as we develop our new grow model, as we believe God for a new move of his spirit, as we seek to adopt new systems and structures for a new day in an emerging new world, we need to remember that his ways never change and his principles don't have a sell-by date on them. His ancient paths are eternal. The methods may change, but the message never does. As we forge ahead to see people find God and find freedom, discover their purpose and make a difference, it's only going to happen to the degree that we follow the ancient paths of Scripture. In this season of church life we're all in right now, I believe God is calling us to consider some of the pathways on the roadmap to life found in these scriptures. Not just to look at the popular paths, but to blow off the dust of some of those bygone byways that just don't seem necessary, relevant or contemporary anymore. As a local church, I see us walking together towards one of life's crossroads. It's here that we need to stop a while ask God to light up some of those eternal paths so that we can all see which way to go and then together we can forge ahead in boldness with some fresh fire in our bellies.
But here's the challenge. It may mean choosing the less trodden path. It may mean walking the way that is not that popular with the world. It may mean taking the longer route. It may mean picking the path of most resistance. But whatever it takes, if the way is God's way, that's the way we will go. So over the next couple of months in our run up to Christmas, all the members of the senior leadership team are gonna be preaching and teaching some of the ancient past revealed afresh to us in the Bible. We're gonna walk down some old sacred paths, beat back the bushes that have grown in the way and remove the obstacles that have stopped us arriving at God's best for our lives. It's all gonna be packaged up in a new sermon series called Whatever Happened To... I have a feeling that I'm a bit late inviting us to the party because I think we've already inadvertently started this sermon series a few weeks ago when we looked at the ancient pathway of fellowship. But that's fine. There are many other roads and pathways for us to approach and consider. For instance, whatever happened to personal sacrifice? Whatever happened to anticipating eternal judgment? Whatever happened to submitting to authority? Whatever happened to the fear of the Lord? Whatever happened to the second coming of Christ? Whatever happened to being planted in a local church? Whatever happened to mothers and fathers in the faith? And whatever happened to a devotion to the apostles' teaching? Well, the good news is that we're going to find out as we open the scriptures together and see God's Spirit point the way ahead for us both individually and corporately. So get yourselves ready to adventure down some of the scripture's secret pathways and be expectant to find the treasure of God's promises at the end of each of them. Be seated at the table of God's word as we prepare to feast on some eternal truth. This is no fast food spur of the moment meal. This is a succulent, slow cooked joint being served up for us just at the right time. In Revelation chapter 3, Jesus writes to the church in Laodicea and says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Church, I urge us all, don't miss a minute of this feast and don't rush it either. Chew it over, digest it properly. Let the word nourish your soul and direct you into a whole new level of Christian living. So the invitation is before us all to taste and see that the Lord is good.